Let me take you back to my college days, sometime in 1997. <coughs> the times when we didn't have Facebook, lives were not conquered by the social media, Facebook, Twitter, and the Instagram, all that. And directions were, uh, the interactions were direct. One fine day, <coughs> I was, uh, along with my dad and our driver, I was going to visit our, our relatives, our relatives' house. And we, were, we hit the roads, we hit the NH47 in, in Kerala. It was sunny afternoon, hot and humid. And uh, my dad is a very safety conscious person. So he was continuously telling us, uh, you know, talking to us, talking to our driver was a little bit, appeared a little bit sleepy that day. He was con continuously telling us things to keep us from sleeping, to keep us from dozing off. And you know, it's very difficult to resist that temptation in, uh, in the sunny afternoons in Kerala, hot and humid, uh, to little doze a little bit. And you know, like falling domingos, you know, I first dozed off, my father also dozed off, and then ultimately, I think our driver also dozed off, at least just for a little, little bit of time. And I don't know how much time passed. All I can remember now is that I woke up to a huge thud, and my, my head hit something, and I couldn't see anything around me. It was complete darkness, and as if I woke up to, you know, woke up from a bad dream. I could hear some voices around me telling me some things, but I couldn't really understand what they were telling me. And time passes on, and I regained myself, and I found that it was not what I was in. I was in an accident, and I had a little bit of concussion. And I regained myself thinking that, you know, it was realizing that it was not a huge accident as I thought. And uh, quickly, you know, I looked around and I found my dad is a little bit more injured. You know, he had, he had to get some stitches. Me and my driver, we were just fine. We just had some minor bruises. You know, we went to the nearest hospital, sorted things out. Thank God. And, uh, you know, we moved on. But all people are not so lucky as some of us are. What shook us in last, the, the most in the last uh, few years ago, in 2010, one of our close family relatives, one of my close family relatives was involved in a fatal accident and he lost his life uh, again on the very busy and dangerous uh, intersections on NH47 in Kerala. He was at the peak of his life and peak of his career. He had elaborate plans of what he wants to do forward with his life, and nothing could be completed. And to the families, it was such an untimely and unexpected loss that the families couldn't come out of it even now. And today I want to tell you that this is a situation that every family in India is at the risk of facing and already facing. And every minute, every four minutes, one family is undergoing this pain. You know, from that day, I had a deep realization that perhaps the most painful, most difficult human tragedy is loss of life to an accident on the road. This is a situation that many of us may not have ever faced or may not even face in our lifetime. This is like a one, you know, one or two times in our lives we'll, fa we'll face a situation like this. Just like, you know, our um, college graduation or buying a house or marriage. These are life events. And yet, what I feel so striking is that the amount of preparation and attention and care that we give to all these other life events is so enormous when compared to the preparation that we give for this one life event, a road accident, and it can trump our entire life. We're never prepared for this. And at the same time, in India, many of us think, and many of us are not aware, how much drastic and what is the extent of this problem that we are now running into as a country. 
To all those who think, this, think that this is not a serious problem, I want to tell them, what if I tell you that in 15 years, road accidents will be claiming the lives of people more than what deadly diseases like HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria combined will claim. Such drastic is the situation that we have. In India and world over, and, and it is very alarmingly, more and more number of lives are being claimed to road accidents. And what concerned me most was even in these days of cutting edge technology, where we have a lot of electronic gadgetry that we own, you know, we have a very powerful cell phone, cell phone in our hand, there is really no technology that is of use, that is of real use when it comes to an accident. There's nothing out there. And that was concerning me very much. And I started thinking, how can I possibly change that? What can I do to change that situation? With my team back in Kerala, I had a startup. And with my team, basically we thought about what to do. And we came up with a, a simple vision. My vision was that basically we create a simple IoT sensor device that will automatically detect an accident and inform the occurrence of an accident to a central database or central server infrastructure. And from there on, we can provide or build a lot of alert mechanisms, a lot of other systems on top of that using this data. So that was our simple system. And with my uh, team, we were able to create such an IoT sensor device and uh, with this larger vision that we can install that type of a device in all vehicles, bikes, cars, trucks, whatever that is going on the roads. And all these devices will beam data to a centralized server infrastructure from which that data can be further used for making very critical decisions for emergency relief, emergency care. And later on, to find out, do analytics, to find out and get insights on how we can improve the road infrastructure that we have. Basically, the most simplest application that we found out was how we can bring help, how we can bring emergency relief to people who are facing a catastrophic accident situation in real time with minimal delays in bringing help. So our device basically will detect an accident. This device is going to transmit information to a central server. And from the central server, it is going to alert a support center, a support network, who will contact the people inside the vehicle and find out their, assess the situation, how much of a, uh, a problem they are under. And then later on, the same system will be alerting the support networks and then followed by engaging personal network. So I felt that we are at this perfect storm of technology and we are in the sweet spot where we can implement many new things in our uh, society which will transform and revolutionize emergency relief and emergency care. All this data, now we are getting captured into a central server in infrastructure and just imagine what we can do with it. We can have now mobile apps that will directly beam this information, just like a Twitter. It'll, it'll send information to all the followers about accidents that happen in our vicinity so that they can go and do their contribution to help the victim that is facing the situation. Or just imagine a WhatsApp-like chat plat application, chat messaging, platform which can connect all the stakeholders including the ambulance, hospitals, our families, everybody who are concerned in helping a person in distress. Imagine an ambulance who is nearby, the vicinity of an accident communicated that there was an accident at nearby and they can offer to go and help immediately without loss of time. 
And imagine those people who are driving in front of the ambulance, sometimes not knowing an ambulance is just behind them and blocking the way inadvertently. They can, be now, they can now be alerted through our cell phones, through their phones, that there's an ambulance coming behind them uh, because of an accident that happened in the vicinity, and they will gladly or they will try to accommodate a smooth passage of an ambulance through the road. And we won't have this many preventable deaths happening on the roads, and we can save some of these lives. I was so excited. I thought that this was one of the best things that we can implement. I couldn't sleep for some days. And that was a few years ago. Fast forward to today. We have the solution. We have made devices, we have made technologies to implement at a large scale. I'm sure that there are many different teams in our country in as startups, in colleges like these, in multinational companies, inside the government, who can build enormously wonderful systems in our country, wonderful technology platforms in our country that will work in hand with us to help our own people who are in critical need in an accident or other emergencies. But much to my dismay, I found that most of the people who I talk to, most of the people who I meet, basically think that such a system is not possible to be implemented in India, or it's going to be very difficult for us to implement such a system in India. Many people who are successful in business, they think that this type of a system should be done by the government. Some people think that this is like charity. You can, never, you can never build a successful business around this theme. I was disheartened. In India, we should start asking, what is the price of life? What is the price of our life? What is the price of the life of our family? And what is the price of life of somebody who is dying on the streets in an accident? We can never put a price or a money or an amount to the life of a person or life of a living being. It is priceless. But as a country, what is the economic cost that we are paying because of this accident will at least enable us to think about why we should bring a pan-India or a country-wide solution that can combat this increasing number of accidents. Passing laws and enforcing with fines is not the way to go. A more systematic, coordinated, technology-based system that can revolutionize emergency relief is our way forward. In India, the total cost as a society we pay for accidents is about 3 lakh crore. And this is 3% of the GDP, India's GDP, in the last year. And what is 3 lakh, 3.8 lakh crore? What, how much is that amount? It is a humongous amount, we know that. But how much is it? I'm not saying that if we fix the, if we improve and if, if there are no accidents happening in India, then we are going to save or make 3.8 lakh crore. crore. But what I'm really concerned about is the human effort, the monetary equivalent of human effort that is wasted on accidents. It is huge. Our own effort is wasted basically due to these accidents. And you can see the amount that we are, we are losing or the human effort wasted to accidents is much more than even the defense budget of our country. If you look at such pirate mission, that much effort that we lose for accidents, we can, we can finance for 29 years, Swatch Park mission. In the same way, we could have funded the national food security scheme for seven years from the, the amount that we lose in one year. We could have converted 847 cities into smart cities from this amount that we waste or that is wasted 
to accidents every year. Ultimately, everyone's life is precious. If you want to know the price of life, you should ask the family of the victim who lost a life to an accident. Then you will understand, you will be able to empathize with the true price of life of a person who is dying on the road. And we must also imagine that this could happen to anybody in our country, any family in our country, we are all running the risk. So today, on a closing thought, I want to ask you this question. Will you stand up and will you be prepared to protect the life of ours, our family, and also our citizens in the country by creating and helping create and demanding for a similar system, a technology-based system that can know when accidents happen, where accidents happen, and bring help to the an emergency relief immediately to the people in distress? Or will you just think that this is not a big deal, ignore this problem, and just let it pass? Thank you.